What's the haps? I'm Maroka, and today I'm going to be taking a quick look at Gratuitous Space Battles 2 by Positech Games. I hadn't realised, but the original Gratuitous Space Battles was actually came out in 2009. That's quite an old game now. I hadn't realised quite how old it was. Uh, I'm about to go back and reinstall it and play at least a little bit of it to actually get a comparison to see what has actually changed between the first and the second game. If you're not familiar with the concept of either, basically it's uh, spaceships blowing the crap out of each other for for your entertainment pleasure. There's very little context or anything, there's no diplomacy, there's no story, there's nothing. It's just, here's a lot of spaceships, make a lot of spaceships, throw them against the other spaceships, and then they will all blow each other up in space. And it's pretty gratuitous. It's pretty cool. So let's have a look at the options before we get into things. Up top we have a bunch of checkboxes here. Most of them are kind of visual effects, some of the kind of personal preference kind of things, tune and tweak things to your liking, and I think a lot of them will probably be useful to turn off if you're having performance issues. Things like bloom and lens flare and things, they, I don't know, they might cause issues potentially. Uh, some things, like I say, are going to be uh, personal preference. We've got to, you've got debris there. Uh, after a big spaceship battle with a lot of spaceships, uh, that's covering up a lot of the screen actually. Um, so it can be slow on older PCs. I think it's more kind of a visual problem is likely to be the issue. Uh, by the end of it, it's like you can't actually see many of the spaceships because there is so much debris. But there you go. Uh, resolution options is a kind of a limited list, I feel. I mean, some fairly obvious resolutions, or what I would have thought would have been fairly obvious resolutions, aren't on there. Where's, where's 1280 by 720? That is what I would normally capture my videos at, and that's just not an option to run this game at. How strange. Looking at the list, it doesn't seem to go below 768 at all, so... I don't know whether the developer particularly feels that nobody should be running games at that particular resolution in this day and age. Surely to God. Maybe that's it, but nope, I was wanting to capture a video in that resolution. You have denied me it. Thanks. What's really interesting at the top here is 2880 by 900. That is... that is both of my monitors combined. That's kind of nice. I have seen a photograph of someone that someone took of running it across three monitors. So I know it does three as well. I don't know how high that goes. I don't know how many monitors people might potentially be wanting to run this across. I imagine the vast majority of people will probably have at most three monitors. And you can definitely make use of all of those. You can have much space gratuity across all three monitors if you have them. Or indeed two, or just the one, but whatever. However many you have, it will probably take it quite nicely. And that's really cool to see. You don't often get that kind of thing, so that's, re that's really awesome that you can just... Because, because there's not a lot of actual involvement in the gratuitous space battles. It's just kind of watching the visual loveliness, so you might as well have the visual loveliness across all of your monitors. On the right hand side we've got a graphical detail slider. What does this do? It doesn't tell me anything. Graphical detail. It's a, it's, it's a fairly vague one, and it's got n it's got no numbers or any kind of information on it. It's just a slider. I don't know. I'll have it on full. Under volume, we've got master controls, we've got music, sound effects, interface, and voiceover all on separate sliders. So that's really cool to see. There's a lot of fine grain control there. I've turned the voiceover right down because I don't want to be fighting with the voiceover all the time. Uh, so, let's have a look at things properly. We've got uh, battle and ship design are going to be the two main things you're going to be using a lot of in this game. Battle is obviously where the battles actually take place. Uh, ship design, you will spend, if you're going to get involved in this game at all, you're going to be spending a lot, a lot, a lot of time in ship design, designing things. So, let's go do that. Because you need to design some spaceships before they can battle, quite frankly. Uh, the game does provide you with a few basic ship designs, but not many. If you're going to start delving, you're going to have to start designing as well. Let's have a list, look at the list of ships that we can work with. So there are, are six classes of ship, which are up from the three that were in the original. The original only had, I believe, uh, was it fighters, frigates, and cruisers? Where fighters were little ships, frigates were kind of a medium ship, and cruisers with the big core of the space fleet. Uh, now we've got gunships, which are kind of a slightly heavier kind of fighter class. Uh, we've got destroyers. Uh, which are a kind of a small but fairly specialized class and then you got your dreadnoughts these are these are now the big ones these are even bigger than the cruisers they are they are the new core of the space fleet so these are going to be what you're going to be those are those are going to be the fun ones those are the very fun ones so th there are four races and each of those has six classes of ship and each of those ship has three variants so there are going to be 12 of each of the six six ships uh, if you scroll down the list, you can find the Kraugerisk race is the race that I've been delving into the most. Uh, I have unlocked all the things. Admittedly, it's not terribly hard to unlock a lot of the ships. The, you can unlock all of the races and a bunch of ships 
with the with the reward that you get from the tutorial mission quite frankly so you can get you can get delving into some of the more interesting stuff pretty quickly it doesn't really hold you back and force you to grind to get the interesting stuff so you can you can get going pretty quickly on this so the crowd risk crowd risk is what I've been taking a look at each of the races has slightly different stats and they're not dramatically different but if we have a look at say the crowd risk fighters that one uh, that one's got a few basic stats you're gonna want to compare so you got 36 is the cost uh, they tend to come in fleets of 16, so you need to bear that in mind when you're designing it. It produces three power to run all the things. It's a fighter, it's a one-man ship, so it doesn't actually have crew on that particular one. We've had a look at something like a gunship, not a gunship. Let's have a look at a frigate. A uh, frigate provides an actual crew. A frigate is manned by a crew of 90 people. I do believe the gunships are also, like I say, they're kind of a slightly heavier fighter, so they also have one as well. We have a look at it. They've got uh, three modules, which is where you put power supply and armor and shields and things. Not that fighters have shields, but you, you get what I mean. Uh, and one one hard point, so the hard points being pretty much where you attach weapons. You can put other modules in there, but it, given that it only has one, if you did that, it wouldn't have any weapons. So you probably don't want to do that on a fighter. And then we've got a pitchfork as well, which has four modules, two hard points, but it costs a bit more. So your costs going to go up as they get more powerful, but this is a fairly powerful one. And then they've each got a bonus as well. Most of the Krogerisk stuff just seems to have targeting boost is pretty much it. They are a fairly aggressive race. Uh, they've got lots of pointy, nasty looking spaceships. And yeah, they're, they're very much about aggression. So if we look at that, it's 20% targeting boost. Gladius targeting boost 30%. Most of their stuff is just going to be... Uh, Allowing them to hit targets more effectively. Targeting boost 20, 14% armor. Look at the Dreadnoughts. Uh, more targeting boost. Uh, however, if we go up and look at some of the human ones, we've got targeting there. Uh, power on that one. That one's got a power boost there. Uh, Bismarck gunships got power. We've got power and speed on that one. We've got reduced armor, reduced shields, but better speed on that one. Uh, shield boost increased there, a better hull integrity, so that's a fairly fairly solid, strong ship, but it's slow on speed. So the humans have got a more of a mixed bag, they're kind of a fairly balanced race, whereas the Krogeris go all-out offensive. I've not really delved too much into the other ones, because I figured I would just stick with one race, but as you can see, the U-Tans got speed, speed. I'm getting the impression the U-Tans are probably mostly about speed. So if you want a really fast race full of fast ships, uh, U-Tans are probably the good way to go. I don't even know what the Zertari are about. Uh, it says hull integrity, armor. I'm wondering if they're a fairly defensive race. I think they might well be, yes. So your Zertari are kind of a bit of a tanky kind of ship, I suppose. That's, that's not even a Terran. That's Terran, so meh. Anyway, I'm confusing my things. Let's look at some Krogerus ships. Let's have a look at, like I said, we started looking at the fighters. Let's grab a fighter. So this is going to be like the smallest ship. You've got these three modules here. The, the big black squares are where you will put uh, various modules. So you've got engines you can put in there. We can put some armor plating in the other. We've got power supplies if you need power. Fuel tanks. It took me a long time to realize but because most of the ships don't need this. But the fighters do need a fuel tank of some sort on them. Otherwise, they won't work. It won't let you save this. Which was, uh, that was confusing because most of the other ships, the bigger ships, they don't require you to have a fuel tank in order to make them work. Whereas the fighters, they actually genuinely do need a fuel tank or they won't go anywhere. You can't you can't save them and use them. Which is kind of confusing. And then weapons. The weapons are the interesting bit. This is what you're really interested in. We have beam lasers. We have pulse lasers. We have various kinds of missiles. And we have something I haven't even unlocked yet. The fighters are reasonably limited in their range. When we get to bigger ships, there'll be more interesting things. So, yeah, you've got one weapon here. The circle around it indicates that this one can fire in 360 degrees. It can fire It can fire straight behind it if it needs to. And then it's got three, three other modules to put other things if you want to put armor in there. Let's put a beam laser on there. And put some armor plating on there. Let's say it does need a fuel tank, so let's pop a fuel tank on it there. And it probably wants an engine, otherwise it's not going to go anywhere. So you can see I'm using way more power than I should. Uh, it's, this one's going to cost me 9.25 power to actually run this much stuff, and I only produce three, so that's not actually going to work. I can't actually, I can't actually save this ship. It is, it is blacked out because I, this is, this is not a valid ship. It's no good. It's using too much power. Uh, so there's a bit of juggling to do. With the bigger ships, you're also going to need to actually manage your crew requirements as well. Bigger ships are going to need more crew to run all the things. With a fighter, it's a one-man ship, so that's not, a, not a big deal. So, if we, can, uh, if we can juggle things around, like I say, I can just put, let's just put a tiny engine on there, maybe that's going to do a better job. That's still fairly powerful. What's using all the power here? It may just be the weapon. It may be that that weapon is so powerful, that one consumes five power, which is more than my ship makes, yeah. So, as a weapon, that's a really powerful weapon. This ship's not going to go unless I put a power supply in it, so... Like I say, it needs, it needs, an, en it needs an engine to go, and it needs fuel to go. 
I guess with this particular ship, if you wanted to make this work, you would actually need a power supply on there. There you go. That that would now that now that's lit up. Uh, I can now actually save this ship design because because it's it's a valid ship design. It has enough power supply. The crazy powerful gun that it's got, or relatively powerful gun, it's got the power supply and the fuel. No, the fuel. Sorry, the fuel and the engine even. So that one's a valid one. So that, that's, that's, that's your smallest one. That's going to come in a fleet of 16, and it does require a bigger ship with a hangar in it for them to dock in as well, otherwise they cannot be deployed. Let's have a look at some of the bigger ships. Go down to... The fun ones are... The fun ones are your Dreadnoughts, so let's take a look at Dreadnoughts. There's a lot going on on a Dreadnought. You've got a ridiculous number of modules, and it's going to take a lot of balancing. I'll tell you what, actually, what would probably be worth doing is showing you one I made earlier, because otherwise building one of those is going to be a really long one. Uh, what have we got? We've got a... Have I got a Dreadnought? I've got my Trident Mark 1 Dreadnought. Sure, let's go with that. Here's one I made earlier. So, there's a lot of things going on. We've got some forward-facing weapons. We've got a uh, heavy beam laser there. Each of these has got different weapon sweeps, so you can see my heavy beam lasers can get most forward-facing angles. These ones are just straight up forward. If something goes behind me, these sledgehammers just aren't going to be able to hit anything. Are they both sledgehammers? They are. They look slightly different icons. That's very strange. Um, we've got some side-facing radiation beams. The radiation weapons will do damage over time as opposed to anything else. Everything's got its own stats, so you've got a whole range of things downside. So if I click on a radiation beam, you can see everything. There's a lot to pour over. I won't get into too much detail because there's far too much detail to get into, I do think. Everything's got its own weight, and weight's going to make the ship move slower. They're going to consume different amounts of power. If you have more powerful things, obviously you've seen, you're going to need more power plants. Uh, they do different amounts of damage. The radiation ones don't actually explicitly do damage. They do damage over time more so than anything else. They'll do different amounts of damage to armor, and to shields, and to hull. And they'll do uh, armor penetration, which means it'll go through the armor. Uh, shield penetration, if it's not high enough to penetrate the shields, it won't do anything at all. So there's a lot of things to balance, so you need, you need at least some weapons that can break a ship's shields, otherwise you won't be able to damage it at all. Uh, once you got through the shield, then it's going to be armor-plated, you could use something that, do, that damages the armor. It's worth creating a lot of fairly specialized ships and creating a balanced fleet out of it. I think that's what's really what's being encouraged here. You want to make a lot of, maybe a lot of smaller ships with a variety of different weapons, so that you can create a really balanced and interesting fleet. I think that's really what is being encouraged the most here. So, I've got my forward-facing missiles there, I've got a few a few 360-degree beam weapons at the back. A couple of, uh, I, to be fair, you often don't get, you very rarely actually get any kind of spaceships behind you, so I usually kind of just put lighter weapons at the back just to deal with mostly things like fighters. If a fighter flanks you, you might want a beam weapon at the back or something, but for the most part, it's not going to be a big deal. And then we've got other more interesting modules, I mean, we've got in the, uh, in the other, we've got... We've got various hangar bays. Uh, hangar bays are going to be used for fighters, as I said. If you've got any fighters in your fleet, or indeed gunships, you're going to need these bays in order to be able to launch them. They have a capacity as well, so... Uh, that one, 30 crew need to man it, but it will hold 64 fighters. That one, less crew, but it holds less fighters. Then we've got launch tubes, 33 crew, but 96 fighters. Those are actually quite a good one, but I imagine, relatively speaking, it's a little bit more expensive than the others as well. So it's going to cost you more, so the overall cost of the ship will go up, so you will be able to deploy less of the ships in battle. And then the, uh, the crew at the top is managed very similar to the power supply. You've got the meter at the top that says, you need this many. Do you have this many? If you don't have this many, you won't be able to deploy it. If you don't have that many, you're going to need to put, a, put crew quarters in so that you've got somewhere to actually house more crew. So in this case, that particular crew module houses 200 crew. We've got a big one that houses 240. We've got a, uh, a crew deck that will house 300. And you could, you could, I could put, I could put loads and loads of those on. Actually, I probably have, haven't I? Those are, uh, those are crew quarters. You, it seems like uh, you probably want to lean more towards putting crew decks on, but then you also need to bear in mind that these probably then consume more power as well. So you might find yourself going over the power requirements by putting them in. So that one uses seven. That one uses eight. That one uses ten. So you might find yourself going over the power requirements by trying to cram as, cram as many crew in as possible. And then, because you've gone over the power requirements, you'll put a power in, power station in. But that requires crew to man it as well. So there's a lot of balancing act, uh, act going on there. You need to. You'll probably spend quite a lot of time poring over it, trying to balance the numbers. Which is why I thought it was worth showing you one that I built already, because trying to build one off uh, from scratch uh, will probably take a little while. And then we've got a bunch of other toys as well as fast repair systems, armor repair systems, target boosters are going to improve our, our aiming. 
Uh, within the engines, you've got a couple of different kinds of ones. You've got thrusters, adds more maneuverability, and the engines add more speed. It, the Dreadnoughts don't go fast at all. It's got, it's got very low speed, and it's got very low turn speed. They don't go fast compared to the other ships, because they're so friggin' large. Uh, defenses, you've got armor plating, you've got shields, and then there's a few other toys that I haven't even got here. Uh, there's a few different ones. I'm not even sure what some of these do. It says it, it says it's a shield capacitor, but then the description just seems to be kind of like a shield. I'm not even sure what that one does. Uh, radiation shielding will obviously prevent radiation damage, but it's it's not necessarily always clear exactly what you're getting. There's so much stuff with so much variety that it's it's it can be a little bit overwhelming. I will say some of the stuff is like I have no idea what we're doing here. So, as you can see, there's even more weapons on here. These are, a lot of these are fairly similar to some of the fighter stuff. You've got your beams, you've got a pulverizer beam is kind of... I really should have one of those on this spaceship. It's it's the unique weapon to this this particular race. It's the big, powerful Dreadnought weapon for the... Uh, for the uh, I forget I forget what this race was called, but yeah. Kraugerisk, was it? Anyway, so you've got all sorts of things. You've got nuclear missiles which do radiation damage. You've got a combat tractor beam which is going to stop ships moving and shake them about a bit and do some damage in that regard. So there's a lot of things you can you can create some very specialized stuff, uh, and it's it's really really in depth. Something that this has that the first one didn't have is we also got a visual editor. It gets worse. There's even more to pour over. Every bit of the ship can be picked up and moved around, or quite a lot of it anyway. A gratuitous amounts of the ship are just individual components. So oh that's a light. Uh, I'm trying to pick up bits, but yeah, so that that's just, that's just. Decorative. That's decorative. That's decorative. Uh, that's decorative. The, en the entirety of the engines are decorative. There's no. There's not any engines there. You have to design. Well, you can design and make your own engines. Obviously, there's a lot of these prefab ones. So if you don't want to worry about this, you don't have to. You can then change the color of everything as well. So let's see. Um, can we just change the general color of the whole thing? Oh, oh, this is changing the weapon color, right? Okay. Well, I didn't want that. But yeah, there's a, you can you can play with this for a very long time if you wanted to change the color of things and the shape and style and there's a lot there is a lot of bits that's that's not even part of the ship but I think quite frankly I think only kind of this sort of these four egg shaped blobs and then the points I think that's the only core structure that this ship has everything else is pretty much visual I guess the weapons are probably things that you've placed as well but for the most part most of this is just make a ship that you think looks cool because. There is a lot of freedom for customization. Uh, one thing I will say, uh, the tools are kind of... I wish there were more tools to work with for this, because there's nothing to... If you want to put something along the center of a spaceship, there's no center tool for some reason. You can duplicate something, so if I were to uh, delete that, I can take that and I can just mirror on the opposite side of the spaceship. So that allows you to make a fairly symmetrical spaceship in that regard. But if you want to put something along the center, it's mostly eyeballing it. I want to take that... And what I can do is I can make it rotate, so that I can spin around on our spaceship. If you want to make things spin, <laughs> there's it, there's a lot of design choices and options there, and then there's a lot of parts to buy as well. There's a lot of things you can buy. The parts are actually fairly cheap, to be fair, uh, but there are more and more bits that you can buy to put on spaceships, and th there's plenty to work with. If you want to start making things really, really, really complex, you can do that, and yeah. It's, it's a bit much for me. I don't think I necessarily want to delve that deep, to be honest, but it's cool that it's there. If you, if you want to get creative, you can get very creative. Alrighty. So, there is... I, I, I'm not sure if you'd find it under mods, but I, it's certainly got Steam Workshop support, so when you create a spaceship, it will off, off allow you to put it on the Steam Workshop, and I have already seen. Someone already made a Borg cube. So, that's what you can do with ship design. You can make Borg cubes. Someone has done that. That's pretty cool. I'm waiting to see someone do, like, an entire fleet of Star Wars ships, because you know that's coming. Someone will do that. You might want to do that yourself, I don't know. I don't quite have the time and patience to design every little snow speeder, but there you go. At any rate, uh, let's head to the battles, because that's really what you want to do, wanted to see. Uh, we've been here nearly 20 minutes, I haven't done a battle yet. But, there is a lot of setup to a battle, so let's, uh, to, again, let's have one I, one, I, one I made earlier. Maybe one I made earlier? Not one I made earlier. Let's... I've got... I made a fairly defensive fleet, so let's open that. That's not a... that's not a very complete fleet. Seems to be lo I seem to have lost my spaceship. I know, I'll tell you what I've lost. Right, I'm gonna have to... I'm gonna have to remake a fighter, I think. Right, bear with me a second. Okay, I've rebuilt some of the fleet. I seem to have recovered some of it. Uh, I seem to have lost the fighter. I think that, that that's a part of that issue that I was having earlier with... I think, it, I think it was saying some of my designs were invalid and I was having issues with it. For some reason, it was allowing me to deploy ships that weren't valid, so... 
I guess there's kind of a bug involved there somewhere, but I guess it was kind of convoluted and I managed to break it somehow. Uh, there have been a number of bug issues, but I think a lot of them seem to have been resolved fairly quickly. There were a lot of crashes very early on, but I've not had so many lately since it, it has updated recently and it seems to have alleviated a lot of issues. But it's not entirely bug free, there are still definitely some issues within the game, but it's quite nice to see that they are being resolved pretty quickly. Uh, so let's grab these bombers. The bombers were kind of uh, my interesting ones that I built. So I want a few of these. Let's grab these. Whether whether they're going to be useful or not to me or not, I don't know. But we, we can see I've got a fairly complex. I've got I've got my three I've got my three dreadnoughts are kind of the core of my space fleet. Behind them I've got uh, these uh, these support lances, which are which are destroyers, mostly equipped with entirely support weapons. So if I click on it, does it give us? Yeah, we've got it's got a heavy shield support beam, so it's going to restore shields. Uh, it's got a recon projector beam, which is going to if, boost the tracking speed of weapons. And it's got a propulsion beam, which is going to give it a little bit more maneuverability. I've, I've essentially created a kind of medic spaceship there, so I've got two medics on my heavies, as it were, if you will. Uh, and yeah, so that, there's some good support there going on there. And I've got one more medic for each of these cruisers because the cruisers are also they say they're smaller but fairly powerful ship. They were they were the core of the space fleet in the first game. I've got my I've got a few more a few more um, destroyers here as well. These ones are predominantly designed to shoot down missiles and fighters as well. So any any fighters, gunships, and missiles that come in, uh, these guys are going to be able to take them out pretty effectively. So it's a fair, all, all in all, it's a fairly defensive formation. I've got a lot of shielding going on, I've got a lot of repairs going on, and I've got a kind of a front wall of things that are going to shoot down fighters. Uh, I do want to put a few more of my bombers in, because the bombers are very, very cool. Uh, these ones, I've literally only equipped them with the anti-shield bombs. Fighters do need to be assigned to a carrier, so let's assign those ones to that. Uh, those ones can be assigned to that one. Fair enough, that's a fleet. So when they run out of fuel, or if they need to reload or repair up, they can fly back to their carrier ship and go back into the hangar for repairs and servicing and, uh, you know, uh, regroup, as it were, before they can deploy again. So that's kind of my fleet. It's actually a very small fleet. You kind of, you get a, you get a supply of pilots to use in the fight, so this one gives you 1,800. Most of those are going to be taken up by uh, fighters. I mean, you're, you're... The large ships really are actually only going to use one pilot. It's got a large crew, but it only needs one actual pilot. So you've got a huge ship, but it only uses one of your pilot supply. But then you you put a, a squadron of fighters in. Well, that's going to use 16 pilots at a time. So you can go through pilots fairly quickly if you have a lot of fighters in your fleet. Uh, most of the other ships actually won't use a lot up. Uh, you got cost, you'll have a limited sort of cost per mission, so in this one it gives you a budget of 100,000. Each ship costs however much you cost it at building. As, a, as you saw when we were building, everything's got a cost associated with it, so the bigger and more bigger and more powerful a ship is, the more it's going to cost. So, it's going, that's going to come out of this budget here. And then honor is effectively how much, how much currency you're going to get at the end of a battle uh, if you win the battle. And the lower the cost of your fleet, the higher your honor. It I think what it basically does is take the cost of the mission, subtracts how much you've deployed, and whatever's left over is your honor. So I've, I'm using about 65,000 out of 100,000, so it gives me 35,000 honor. So let's get this going. Let us have a fight. So I think the more complex your stuff, the longer loading time is going to take, because it needs to load a lot more stuff in. But uh, we are ready, so let us begin the game. So, Gratuitous Space Battles! This is it, this is the game. I have no control over this. Most of the control is preparing things and making it go. There is a, there's a lot more sort of voice comms in the background, but as I say, I've turned them down just because I don't want to be talking over it. And quite frankly, you do see, you seem to get to sell all the same dialogue over and over again, especially with a fleet like this. Most of them are going to be like, support beam, support beam, support beam, support beam, support beam, and it's like, okay, shut up at this point. I know I have support beams, I built a lot of support beams. So I've got the, I've got a very, fairly small fleet here of my own going up against, if we scroll up top, we've got a massive, massive, massive enemy fleet. It's not going to play out particularly quickly to begin with, but you can change the speed. You can see we've got speed controls down the bottom. You can also do that with the keyboard. Plus and minus will increase speed, so let's up it to double speed. Uh, you can press P to pause it at any time as well. You can you can right-click on the spaceship and see how it's performing. You can see the individual stats of each of the weapons, how, how, many, how many shots have been fired, how many have hit their mark, how effective everything's being in a battle. So if you want to pause and then pour over and think, oh, what's the most effective on this spaceship? You can, if you really, really want to get into the nitty gritty and figure out 
what is the most effective part of your ship, what's not being effective and therefore what needs replacing so that you can make an even more effective fleet if you really, really want to min-max that way. Yeah, you can do that. I think a lot of people are just going to be happy to watch a massive gratuitous space battle play out on their screen. So, we're not even engaging particularly closely here. It's mostly fighters going on. Let's up the speed. Let's, let's up the speed to four times. So you can see a gratuitous space battle play out before us. So there is really no control over it. The entire control is the strategy and preparation beforehand. Designing your fleet and planning it to synergize most efficiently. On the playing screen there's also orders. You can give everything orders. So I've, I've asked the destroyers that are following these guys basically just to be escorts. Which means they're always going to stay really close to whatever they're being targeted to escort. Uh, fighters, you can you can give everything commands as to kind of which ships you would most rather it engaged. So you can say, oh, I want my fighters to only target the the frigates. To have an entire fleet of fighters that only go after frigate ships. So you can you can be pretty complex and in depth in it. So if you like complexity and min maxing, there's a lot of that going on. So as things blow up, as you can see, there is going to be a lot of debris, and that's going to you get yeah, it gets to a point where you really can't see the spaceships very well through the debris, and it's kind of a little bit annoying. I will say that much. But as as I said, when you saw on the menu, you can you can turn that off. You can, you can make it. You can get rid of a lot of that stuff. There's a lot of information to consume, and you probably don't need to consume it all. There's a lot of flavor stuff at the top, uh, people communicating. Some, some of it's a bit jokey, some of it's uh, valuable information. It's all going past too far to even really, uh, really consume. Uh, so it, it's, it's quite an amusing game as well. All, everything's, got, everything's got fairly entertaining names. They're all pretty randomly generated. You don't seem to have much control over that. Uh, but all the ships have got their own random entertaining names. Solar Ninja. Target practice, <laughs> voyeurism to the bottom of the sea. There's, there's some cool stuff in there. So it's it's just, it's mostly about the spectacle. It's just about creating a massive spectacle, and that's cool. I like that. There's a lot of prep work goes into creating the spectacle, and that's that's where the meat of the game is. It's just preparing to create a massive spectacle, and I can appreciate that. I, I quite enjoy that kind of thing. I think it involves quite a uh, quite a time investment and. Uh, I think if you're if you're the sort of person who wants to get going with things quickly, uh, you, you might not enjoy this game as much as if you've got a lot of time to invest in actually pouring over all the details. And it's, it's clearly going to appeal to the kind of people who do enjoy pouring over the details a lot. I enjoy that sort of thing, but again, it's hard to try and find the time to invest. I, I mean, I've sunk about four hours into this game so far. I've only done like four, four or five battles. It's crazy the amount of time you spend just trying to and trying to create a really well balanced and effective spaceship. Uh, you can it can involve quite an outlay of time to be honest. And I win. It's not fought to as I, as it will tell you. It is not fought to the last ship. It's just fought until it's decisive. You got you got these counters in the top corner that say that this how much fleet they have. So they started with thirty eight thousands worth of fleet. Uh, we started with twenty four thousand uh, worth of fleet. I don't know value I guess. And it gives you a bit uh, the little color. The colored wheel gives you a percentage value of what percentage you've got left. So we won with a vastly, vastly smaller fleet because of my defensive strategy. I feel, which is really strange because I've got a really offensive army. But um, there you go. All right, so there we go. Once you won, it will give you a bit of currency, and you can take that to the research and development lab. Uh, admittedly, I that was a, I think that was a slightly larger fleet than I had last time, so I didn't actually get anything from it. If you can beat the same level with a smaller fleet, it will give you a bit more money for it as well. So you can continue to try and improve on it and earn more currency, and then you can take that currency to the store. So you got the races there; they cost about two thousand each. Uh, you got the ship hulls; they cost a thousand each, though they're really not hard to come by, as you can see. Um, I mean, the first time I did that battle, I did score like 35, 40,000 honor. So when we're talking about that kind of value of honor from it, uh, 2,000 for a race or 1,000 for a hull really isn't a lot. A lot of weapons can be a bit more expensive. We've got stuff there, 4,000 for a plasmatic shield generator. I don't even know what's so good about that, but apparently it's really good. Uh, pulse laser for 600. You've got some smaller, cheap stuff. You've got some really expensive stuff. You've got a variety of stuff. And I've unlocked... Uh, to be fair, I've unlocked nearly half of it. So I imagine... Like I say, that's about four hours gameplay and I've unlocked nearly half of it, so you're probably going to get most of the stuff in the game pretty quickly. Uh, I have heard, I'm looking on the Steam forums, there are some complaints about that, but uh, I don't necessarily think that. It, it, 
It's probably personal preference to you whether that's a big deal. I don't think it's necessarily a, a bad thing that you get lots of interesting toys to play with fairly quickly. And then over here we've got components. These are the visual bits. These are the bits that you can uh, decorate your spaceship with. And uh, they don't cost much at all. They only cost 200, so you can buy them and pick them up pretty quickly. So you can get all the different bits. If you're here, these are these are there if you want to make your ships look really, really pretty and fancy and unique and want to make a Borg cube or whatever the heck you want to make. The, this is where you'll find all those bits. Uh, so there you go. Those are the things that you can buy in the store. So you'll want to head to that after each battle to pick up a bunch of stuff. And that will be found over here in the research. Uh, challenges and online is basically just going to be... its I think it's basically asymmetrical multiplayer. I mean, I've got no one to do it with, so I can only presume it's asymmetrical. You can you can design a fleet and challenge a friend to fight, and they will get they will get that on this challenge board. They can go on here and go, Oh, so-and-so has challenged me to a battle. They can then create their own fleet and pit it against yours, and to the victor go the spoils. I'm not sure, I'm not sure whether you would get honor from that, to be honest, so it may just be for the personal prestige. Uh, I have not had a chance to try that out because I don't know anyone else who has this game, so it's kind of a little difficult for me to actually say much about the online. But uh, there's the potential there if you want to pitch, your, pitch yourself against your friends. Uh, there's also mods here, so apparently, apparently mod support is available. There is indeed Steam Workshop there. Of course, you'll have to go through Steam to actually have a look at that. But yeah, there, there's mod support right out of the box as well. So interesting to see what people create with that as well. People should be able to come up with some fairly interesting things, I would have hoped. There's a lot going on in Gratuita Space Battles. It's, uh, I feel like it's kind of a fairly niche thing. I think, uh, like I say, if you if you just want sort of instant action, you're not going to necessarily find a lot of that. If you're the sort of person who wants to pour over every little detail and micromanage a massive, massive space fleet, there's some very, very cool stuff going on in Gratuita Space Battles too. Is it dramatically different to the original? Um, maybe not hugely. Like I say, you've got the visual editor, you've got more spaceships to work with, and I presumably you'll have different toys in the re uh, research and development. I've not really gone through all the things in the original and compared it to this version to see what weapons and systems differ, but uh, ultimately it's more of the same. It's definitely a lot prettier. It had a massive, massive visual overhaul, so it looks a heck of a lot better. And I, th I think the, uh, the fact that you've got six different kinds of spaceships uh, kind of allows you to create a re some really, really interesting space fleets. I think it's pretty cool. I'm enjoying it. I think I'd quite like to play a bit more of it, if, you're, if I'm honest. But there you go, that is Gratuita Space Battles. This is available, available on Steam, as well as a bunch of other various marketplaces, available for £18.99 or your regional equivalent. Thank you, so thank you very much for watching. I've been Maroka. This has been Gratuita Space Battles 2. I'll see you next time.